eight videos in. I want to go back to Ableton so bad. I've been doing that for, I need all my good plugins back and all this stuff, but I mixed 100% in Soundtrap, 100% free, whatever you could get for free in Soundtrap. And I made this track that you're about to hear. I'll play the original first, and then I'll play the mixed one. Notice that the original doesn't sound terrible because I'm getting all of the samples and everything was produced by somebody else. So they sent it over to me without it being mixed. So I didn't make everything in Soundtrap. Here's the sampling video so you know how to sample anything in Soundtrap. I'm talking about just one shots and snare hits, not necessarily working with samples, but check that out to get any sample of drums or bass in Soundtrap that really uh, helps not just the library that Soundtrap has, anything that you can make in there and the vocals in this video will be at the second half and skip to this timestamp right here if you want to go see that because I go through the beat 100% first and the vocals have a very very big ass key at the end. It's the most thing that I'm proud of with this whole series is the effects and how I do the vocals in here to make that pop out, right? The mix is going to sound first and once on that bed I'll play the original and then I'll play the mixed version. Let's get into this thing. 45 minutes. Let's go. Mm. But she know what it do Starting with the bass Sounds like this how it came to me It's pretty good I had the whole track by the way This entire line was given to me by the producer So it isn't exactly how I usually do 808s and things like that. Having said that, I took an 808 right here and just like the top line, you can make the exact same bass line of chopping up one note. So is the exact same thing as this up here. If you can't find 808 samples, there's a ton of things out here. Check out my video on sampling anything directly into Soundtrap, and that'll show you everything you need to know. So getting samples shouldn't be that hard of a thing. And then once you have the samples, you could chop them up by going in here, changing the pitch if you want on some notes by going into a note, pressing edit, and pitch change. All of these pitch changes are available in the free version of Soundtrap. So check any of these. I was doing about, you know, like plus four, plus three on some to get a melody going in the bass. After I was done with that, muted that, and this bass came out. Let's go into the effects. Started out like any bass that I usually have, straight with the distortion plugin, seeing how hard I could get the distortion before it sounds weird. Any distortion that you have on here is almost essential for any single bass sound that you have. Check out my bass video if you want to go more in depth on that. But if you want to hear the bass in laptop or phone speakers, you need to be incorporating some type of distortion on almost any sample that you have if you don't have a dirty, dirty 808 already in your program. So I started with that. Sounds like this. That looked pretty fine after all these EQ moves. And this is where the real sound changing actually comes in. I put an EQ on here, sounds like this. How that was. Had that up really high. I go into every single band of the EQ, paying special attention to this region right here of the last two bands, because I know they're sub and that's the main area that the bass and the 808 is gonna take up. I went in, took every single fader right here and said, I like it right there. Did that for every single one of here and then cut out this high, high information all the time with low, low bass sounds. You want to leave room up in that high register for vocals and things like that. So I left that pretty blank and then I went into a compressor. It sounds very subtle now and you're not getting too much gain reduction. Overall, it sounds like, but you're doing a lot at about minus nine right here on this compressor. It glues everything together. It makes everything flat. Copy these settings if you want to. It's a really natural sounding bass sound, and it's what I did for this specific bass. 
Not all compressors are going to work for every single bass sound, and I didn't need too much compression with this bass sound already. What I tried to do was probably cut down on the transients right here, these sharp peaks in the top of the bass sound, like you have here. If I zoom in really quick, it's a pretty sharp peak compared to the rest of the sound, so I just took those down a bit, but I added a little bit of attack in the compressor. That's how I did it. I needed a bit more gain, so I just added a volume. I don't like messing with this global track volume fader every single uh, time I want to make a volume adjustment. I leave that until the end of the mix when everything is engineered where it needs to be and everything is sounding correct. And then I'm mixing everything together is when I use that knob. And then I just go to the main screen over here. And this knob is the same as this knob. So I'll save this knob while I'm in the process of adding effects. But if I want volume on here, I'll just add a volume plugin. I could have done it with this output on the equalizer as well. It would have been the same thing. It may be if I did it after the compressor, but I just needed a little bit more gain. So I did it right there. And then this final EQ was probably something I did once we heard everything else in the track mixed. So I'll save what that sounds like until every single instrument we hear. And then I'll show why I added this EQ because I know it was a later step in the process. While we're in the low end though, this is a key part in the bass that needs to be uh, happening in the final mix. Again, it won't happen for the last, last thing, but I have an automation that's tucked in here, a vocal automation. It says volume right there. And you see it's the sharp pull downs of the volume, right? That's the volume over time. And then I'm holding it, sharply putting it down at every one of these peaks. Why am I doing that? Because it's every time that my kick drum hits. If you see my kick drum down here on this track all the way down below, there's a kick sound, there's a kick sound, and every time the kick hits, it's ducking. I'll go into this a little bit more at the end, but know that the kick and the snare are interplaying because of this automation. I won't even turn it on yet, but save for the end while I turn that last EQ in on the bass and show what the side chaining or ducking in this volume automation is doing. Right now, I'll go to the kick, what that actually does sound like. Dry, I got a kick sample that sounds like this without any effects on. My kick sounded like this. Oh, I'll mute the bass. That's what our kick sounded like. Added a bit of distortion on this kick, it looks like, too, just probably to give it a little bit more aggression. Let's see how that sounds. I like that. I like that a lot. Added some more gain, like I said before, because I needed to save this knob. A little bit more in your face. I took out a bunch of high end. The song that I did... Uh, this song on this type of feel for this thing needed the bass cut. I felt like in a bunch of classic hip hop songs, um, especially like old school stuff, there wasn't a lot of high end on the kick drum. There's a ton of songs that have a bunch of high end like this on the kick drum and a really clicky sounding kick sound is pretty cool sometimes and it could make or break a track to give drums a real pop, but I took it out here. So it sounds like this. Sounds pretty good. And then I ducked a little bit here. I did another subtle passive moves with an EQ right here. Main one is I added a little bit to this fader, which probably gave it a big kind of woofier characteristic about the two, 300 range in the frequency spectrum. I liked how that sounded right there. Not all kicks do that. And I took a little bit out in this high end. And then this, again, was probably a global EQ that sounded once everything came together. So I'll save that for when I do that on the bass and the exact same thing as well. This kick layer track that's right under here adds a bit of character and it sounds like this. That is also a very, very complicated thing that I did that is going to take a long explanation that I'll have at the end of the video, but it's not essential. Nothing even sounds... Uh, in your face with that kick layer. So we'll move on to the hi-hats, mixing all the drums together. See how the hi-hats sound. Pretty basic, and I'm almost guaranteed that I added some big high-end to this. I added a little bit right here. Cut out this woofy stuff, added this high stuff. 
then made this really present. Hi-hats are like the only thing in your song other than your vocals that occupy this really high frequency range up here. So it's almost essential that you're boosting that and making sure that's where all the brightness in your track is coming from. Then we have our snare and our snare layers. Snare number two is accents. So I'll just show you what the snare sounds like right now. That snare layer kind of sounds like a clap. We'll go into this snare, see what I did. Mute that one. Mute everything but snare number one right here. Mute this kick. That sounds pretty good on its own, actually. I like that snare sound, uh, but I'm pretty sure I added a ton of things to the EQ right here to make it work with the other track. That took a lot of the body out of it, and I'm pretty sure it's because I'm getting it back when I'm doing this layer. Layering snares is a very major key that I came across. I added this compressor as well. Is a very major key, though, layering when it comes to making things sound thick, fat, and not that little blip, tinny little hit of a kick or a snare that you get when you have cheap software instruments you really get to make something deep rich and fresh when you layer things like that so i layered it with this kind of clap swoop sound see how that sounds bit more character to it added this compressor made everything made everything even out that's how the kick sounds so all the drums uh well i add this um snare too which was these accents you'll hear i didn't do too much Those are pretty back there. Um, I added a ton of plugins on here. Let's go through that really quick just to show. It isn't really important. I did add a ton to here, but this was probably just me doing a bunch of stuff. You could copy what I have down here if you want, but because it's a background instrument, I'm pretty sure that I'm just keeping it in the background. Added some high end to it kind of bounced around with this auto pan as well too it isn't nothing crazy it probably adds a little bit of atmosphere a little bit of brightness with this peak up top but it isn't that essential so all of the drums together sound like this now because all of uh the drums are there let's start adding this pluck instrument i'll add this straight away Then I'll isolate the pluck, show you what I did with that. I call it a pluck. I'm not sure what people call instruments like these. It's kind of just like this hip-hop background instrument. <laughs> but here we go. Took out the rumble, took out this very low end. Essential for a lot of this stuff, leave this low end for the bass. That made a big difference. It made it sound really squashed in isolation, but I guarantee you that in the mix, that was a move on purpose. Having this dynamic compressor sound like this compared to this, even though I think it sounds worse in isolation, right there, I think it totally makes up for it where it is in the mix and what it's doing playing with the vocal. So we're going to do that. Added some EQ. Added a bit of this vibrato plugin. I was trying to emulate what things like the RC20 and the, you know, isotope vinyl or um, the one that Candy Beats uses that he didn't show anybody, the uh, tape machine, I think it's called, that automate uh, or change the pitch a little bit and warble things like an old uh, tape machine does. So it's like coloring the sound a bit. There's like a warp knob on a bunch of these things that I tried to emulate with this to make it just sound a little bit cleaner, uh, a little bit more interesting. So it's very, very subtle in there. The rate isn't too high. The depth is very, very low. So that isn't too essential either, but that's what I had for this pluck sound. What's worth mentioning is that this pluck sound was faded in with this sound in the beginning. That's a pluck as well. Take the loop off. Then it fades into this. I 
I did that because in the beginning, I like how this pluck sounds, intro pluck. I like how this one sounds alone, and in the mix, I liked that crushed, warbly sound. So we'll go into this pluck. I added some effects to here, I'm pretty sure. Just an EQ, took out the low end in this pluck. Let's see what it sounds like. I liked taking out the low end and then every low end instrument comes back into the mix once it drops at this point right here. So the plucks by themselves sound like this. Now that that is like kind of the bed of what's going on, I'll add these top little crashes. They were just a little accent for when the drop hits to give some sparkle as the bass comes in. They sound like this. Uh, they don't sound at all how they currently are. And then maybe if I turn the EQ on. Well, if they're not sounding right now, then that's okay. There we go, the reverse one. There we go, they're good. So the reverse one... I always do reversed kind of crashes and they call them risers like that because it's just a little bit of extra spice that goes into it. I'll play with the plucks so you get what it's doing. You kind of could hear what it is, but. When the bass comes in with that, I'll play everything up until this point. And that should be every track that we have except the vocals. And the vocals are coming up with the bass kick layers, the kicks, and the snares. Hi-hats, crashes, plucks, everything is good. This is what the final track sounds like behind all the vocal stuff. Doesn't sound too bad, doesn't sound as bassy to me quite yet. There is something that's missing, and that is because we have these final EQs that are going on. So now that we mixed everything in the track, I'll hear uh, the back and forth of what this bass sounds like with this new EQ and without it. That sounds like this. Looks like it got a little quieter, and then we'll hear what the kick did with its final EQ. That sounds pretty good. Kick layer is there and the sidechain thing. This is something that really needs to be said and not a lot of people do. There's a ton of talk going around hip hop mixing communities that you shouldn't sidechain your 808s. Now, you shouldn't sidechain your 808s if you're in one of these big DAWs and you have a sidechain plugin and you just want uh, your kick to hit harder. That'll never work. But what does work is automating the volume like this I'm going to make a whole rant about why you need to have something like this happen. Cutting out the bass woofy sounds when the kick comes in. But it just does make your kick and bass tighter when you use it right. I mute everything but the bass and kick sound right now. And then you'll hear the difference between what a side chain, quote unquote, sounds like with the bass and the kick and when it doesn't it makes the kick pop a lot more and gives it a low end presence and it makes the sub not attack and mush together with that kick so without it, it sounds like this with Kind of competing with each other right here. I think it sounds beautiful. There's nothing unnatural about that because you're not getting a huge pumping side chain coming back in. This would sound terrible and that is what a lot of plugins do. This is what I do and it gives a slight bit of the transient of the kick to come through and allows everything to be cleaned up like that. 
a good thing to note too, music production wise and mixing wise in general, if you hear a little bit of the sound in the beginning, like you're hearing a little bit of the kick come through because the bass ducks a bit right here, the ear is going to think it's a continuous sound at that volume that you first heard it. That's the same with the attack setting on compressors, which I'll go into in a later video. But this is a very, very key thing when getting your low end to work well and to get something really clean. It totally can happen and it makes the entire track without these dirty vocals up here sound like this. Mute that uh, copy of the bass. Now we got a good track. Here's the vocals that we had recorded. 19, but you know what it's Find me, make it dinner for two. It's like the entire track kind of sounds pretty and amps up to this. Uh, dull background quiet weak sounding thing so we'll go into an entire track dedicated to the vocals themselves i took this dry track went up to here little three dots next to the name of the vocal exported the track imported it into a new project and let's go see that right now all right so we put the dry vocal straight into a new project by itself made sure Everything was straight. I got a copy of the original beat that I had without any vocals. And I'm going to put this singing over the main beat and let's see how it sounds just dry again. 19, but she know what it's to have. Find me. It's utterly terrible. So we're going to change the hell out of this. I went over a ton of things in my vocal video, but the main thing that is a takeaway is this shape that I have for my first two EQs on a vocal. I don't necessarily need to do two EQs on every time. This is just what I did to make sure I had something clean and what my ear was tracking when I was messing and hearing this in the moment. But they all have this downward shelf-like look. This is because shelving EQs are a staple in normal vocal tracks. I go into it a ton in the vocal video at around this time spot, by the way, if you want to skip straight to that. But for now, without these two EQs, it sounds like this. And then I'll show when I added them both in. Take the loop here. Second one makes the big difference. For a show, but she could 19, but she know what it's to have. Find me. That's the big thing right there. That's the that's the money. When you have a bunch of that low end, rumbly, woofy stuff cut out right around 2k, 2500 right there is a good cut. Here's what it sounds like. All right, then I had just a straight up compressor on it like I normally have on every vocals. These settings were really good for the vocal that I had right now. Around 70 milliseconds is a great delay uh, attack time so you could have a little bit of the naturalness coming through. If it isn't around 70, I'll show you what it sounds like. Compressors just don't sound really natural when you go down and I wanted to preserve that for this main vocal track. So here's what it sounds like. <laughs> As I went down into that attack time, it's just a little bit more natural. Just a little bit kind of comes forward and hits you a little bit like that. So around 70 is perfect for that. The release time, the ratio, I had a subtle compressor on here. A knee all the way up is a great thing to have too. It gives a natural sound to the compressor again. Even though I want this a lot more compressed, I'll deal with that in a second. Major keys coming in a second about these other six tracks that I have for my vocals right now. But until then, I had a little bit of a delay, and it's probably just a little bit of a slap delay to give a little bit of interest on the main track, which I thought was fine. This is how it sounds. Uh, 
That didn't sound too bad. Now, here's where we get into the money. That track would work. That's the primary track that you're hearing when you're hearing the track in the song, when you're hearing the main vocal. But that isn't what we have on vocals. We want reverbs, we want it to be a little bit more up front, and then there's a bunch of other little things that I have in these three tracks below, which are particular little interesting things about my song that I wanted. If I had five tracks, what is that? Five, six tracks dedicated to the vocals in the main one, Soundtrap would run so slowly that I couldn't possibly get all the benefits and hear that the things as I'm doing it. That's why I moved over to a new track. But here's what I did with the reverb track. The reason that I didn't go in and if I wanted reverb, just add this reverb dial right here is many, many reasons. I also go over that in my vocal video, but it's basically just because it's sloppy. We have a ton more control over the reverb when it's just in its own track. So we'll hear that alone and with the normal. But she know what he do. Duplicated the track, called it reverb. All the effects on here, it's really, really a wet signal. So what we had here was this. Uh, find me, make it din Didn't want any of the low end being processed by the reverb. Had a little compressor. Could probably add a little bit to that attack time. That would sound great just to squash it a little bit so the reverb was pocketed right there in your face and didn't go up and down with the dynamics of your song. And then it looks like I added two reverb plugins back to back. Sounds like this. That got pretty loud. So adding these reverb plugins, the only thing that you're doing is making a really, really wet, wet signal. I don't want to hear any of the original vocal in there. I just want this wash of sound. That sounded a little bit aggressive on the ear, so I EQ'd it a bit with these two EQs. You could check these settings out. After the EQs, it sounded like this. Sounds a lot better than me. And then just a little bit, one more compressor that's pretty heavy, just to glue everything again and make it just sit in one tiny place. Sounded like this. So with the original vocal, here's what we got. One more thing to mention before we hear them together. A very big key about having your own reverb track and what you could do is add a very cool dynamic uh, characteristic to the reverb, which is called pre-delay, which they don't give you the option to do in Soundtrap. But now that you kind of break Soundtrap's method and have your own track, you could add it, a ba you could add it back effectively. And what I did, what pre-delay is, is a little bit of a delay in the verb that comes right before the main vocal. And as you could see right here, a little bit of the reverb track is just moved over from where this was. So you're hearing that at a slightly later point, which is what a bunch of normal delays naturally do sound like. And it makes it sound just a little bit better and gives the vocal a space to sit mainly. They sound like this. 19. Didn't sound too bad. I'd EQ it a bit differently right now if I had the chance, but nevertheless, that's how we had it. The parallel track that we see down here, the next biggest key to these things. Making your vocals pop, making something that really hits the listener is underappreciated in mixing. Here's a quote from uh, Mike Dean who produced bunch of Kanye stuff is like Kanye's main guy, bunch of Travis Scott stuff saying how important loud in your face vocals are. Okay. And just when I think the vocals are right, mm -hmm. I usually turn them up about three or four dB. Okay. So once you get it to where you think it's right, then up three or four dB and then you're at yeah. a spot. That's gotcha. cool. Gotcha. Dean's rules. I you know. The just, whole thing it's of it's as simple rules. as turning it louder. That's a, that's a headline. So while you definitely need to turn them up, having a parallel track, which you heard Dave Pensado talk about slightly up in there, was something that is essential in making it really pop out. A parallel track alone isn't meant to be heard alone. What it is, is a bunch of compressors on a track, heavy, heavy, heavy compressors that make it double of the vocals so you have a spot like always there in your face, but not competing with the vocal at all. 
all of the EQs and dynamic compressor things that I have in here were for a reason. I'm going to add the compressors right now, and then I'm going to show you all of the EQs that I did because all I'm basically doing is shaping something once it's been compressed. So it's been a lot heavier, and it's just to clean things up. Here's the akimbo vocal straight and with the parallel on. 19, but she know what it do have. Find me, make it dinner for two Kind of came in your face a little bit more. It's very subtle, but now let's add all these EQs. Akimbo! Uh, she a fiend for a show, but she could that added something now. Now that we're only taking care of this little top end before the compressor, we're having a little bit more of a pop or a spot with this parallel compressor. I'll hear it uh, with it and without it again one more time. 19, but she know what it do have. Find me. It's pretty good, but a little scratchy. Once again, added the gain before the main one. Then I just added this EQ and this one. Again, they're going into every single band checking, you know, do I like it up? Do I like it down? I go, oh, that's too far. Let's go all the way up. Oh, that's a little too far. Uh, that's a little too far. And that seems perfect. And I do that for every single band. It doesn't have to take too long. I'm intuitive with this stuff and you will be over time as well. But here's what these two EQs sound like finalized. Make it dinner for two. So with the parallel track and without it one more time. That's kind of it. Adds a little bit more brightness I had in this parallel track. It just happened to work out like that. And it's so much more in your face, especially with this verb. Check all these three out together. Without the parallel track. So without it, it gets kind of washed out in that reverb, and especially when you put it back in the track. So you know that if you don't have a parallel compressor on, there's no way that your track is going to pop out and have something right on top and blended with this mix super well because it'll just be lost in the middle. One more time. 19, but you out. know what it do have. Find me, make it dinner for two. Oh. All right, so that's how the main vocal sound. That is the main vocal chain for this entire thing. I'll show the screenshots just like I've been showing of every single vocal that we have here. And these next couple things are just the particularities that give interest and depth and punch to the main part of your song. So these three doubles sound like this on their own. And then I'll add all of the plugins that I did for these. All right, so they were just adding a little bit of a double to that main vocal sound. I'll do it without the plugins and the main track. Oh, what it do? Find me, make it dinner for two. That came from duplicating this main track again, taking them down, cutting out the pieces that I didn't want. So just this word akimbo in every single one of these, uh, or ba da da, and pitching them down. So again, you go into edit right here, change pitch and change the pitch and experiment with these things. Plus 12 and minus 12 definitely always work when you're doing doubles like this. They're octaves and musically and music theory wise, I'll definitely make videos on that in the future, but they sound the absolute cleanest. There's nothing that'll be cleaner than 12 semitones above another vocal because it's the exact same frequency. So they sound like this, and then I added all these plugins. I'll put them in isolation one more time just so you could hear what it sounds like. But it's a little bit of EQing, a little bit of compressing again, 
and then a bunch of delays. I added this, I added this 3D thing, which just was a sound trap way of low passing and kind of uh, expanding a little bit, the opposite of compressing to make something sound a little bit farther away or closer. I knew it took out the high end, so I just liked how it sounded. Added a big reverb again too, really saturated it, or really, you know, drenched it in reverb. Added another compressor took these delays on and then one more EQ to take out the rumble. I'll put every one of these on in succession so you see what it's doing to the actual vocal and then you'll see what it is. They'll be panned hard left and right too, which is a big, big uh, difference that I had in these vocals. So this left double and this right double are panned differently, which gives it that width and that body and is definitely the main contributor. The panning on this is the main contributor to making this sound like a deep, wide rumble double. So I'll tighten up the loop right here and only hear this left. <laughs> took out the rumble, took out a little bit more. Compressed it. About to gain back in your face. Added this delay. That's really effective just to make something that really had a long tail. Then we added these two 3D plugins, which you could have accomplished also by taking off in this high end or adding a filter plugin, which you could find in Soundtrap as well, and cutting the highs off like that. Um, it's a complex way that they're doing it in the 3D ones, and I liked how they sounded, how they are. So this. Sounds pretty far away with these two. I liked it. Then I drenched it in reverb. Again, tighten it up with the compressor. Added another delay on this damn thing just to make it so effective. Why not, you know? Then once again, because we added a ton of rumble with these uh, different plugins and stuff in this experimentation, the delays and the reverbs, and we compressed them. I'm taking it out one more time. So you have this super wet sounding signal. I basically, at this point, doubled this track and then put it to the right and made small differences. This is another thing that really makes things sound interesting and wide and rich is you'll see that all of these EQs were the exact same as the left one, all these compressor settings, the delays, only a tiny bit changed. Now we have the 3D ones that didn't change too much. This was wide room instead of close room on the reverb for the left double. So this is the right double and the left doubles reverb was wide room and now the right says close room. So there's a little bit of differences like that. It's still drenched in reverb, but nevertheless, I added the compressor again and then this delay, the time is a little bit down compared to the left. We'll see that the time's a little bit up on the left. It looks like a little bit smaller, even though the mix is the same. And then the time is just slightly peaked little changes like this. I made to get separation of these two tracks. And then again, I took out that rumble, which they both needed. So on the right sounds like this. And then together they sound like this. Doesn't sound too bad. And this mid double, I'm pretty sure I pitched the vocal up by a couple semitones. Maybe seven, which would be a fifth, and maybe 12, which would be an octave. They would both sound the best. Guarantee that's a fifth up. So you go into pitch and then seven semitones. Seven and 12 are key numbers to remember. They're always going to sound good when you're doubling things like this. So that mid double had a pitch up of seven. Again, I'm probably duplicating because these two EQs to start with the exact same as the others had these other three Ds on it. So it's also probably a double. And then I didn't drench this one in reverb. It looks like I kept it pretty straight up the middle. Sounds like this. That was just to add a little bit of interest to the main vocal. And now with everything, the effects sound like this. And with the main vocal, they sound like this. 
19, but she know what it do All right, so that's how that sounds. I muted the beat right here, pressed save, exported when it was done mixing the vocal, and then I put it back into the original track. Keep in mind when you're exporting this, Soundtrap does something very, very unique and different whenever you're mixing things. The reason why I kept some of the EQ moves how I did them was because I know that when Soundtrap mixes or exports my things, they're going to add a little bit of reverbs compressors, limiters, delays, and EQs onto the tracks that I have guessing its best guess at how to get a final product out. When you're exporting anything, even this solo isolated vocal track, it thinks it's a whole song and tries to fill it up like it's a whole song. This is the exact template that I want, so I'm pretty sure when I put it back in the main mix, I compensate with a little bit of EQs, and you'll see that as we go in there, but know that you'll have a little bit of extra reverb on these tracks. It isn't too noticeable, but when we go in, we'll see exactly what it did and how this fits in the main song. Go back into our main track, keep it how it was. And the final version sounds like this. Nineteen, but she know what it do. Find me, make it dinner, but I gave everything away in this video. That was a lot. <laughs> Man, I've done eight of these videos so far, and if I missed anything in this one, leave a comment below to make sure. I'm really good at answering those because I'm new and we have like no subscribers at this current moment. So thank you guys so much for watching and a like and a sub, like again, for a small channel goes a long way for a channel like mine. I'm working my ass off on these videos to just do everything in Soundtrap. I'm giving all my things away and I'm willing. I'm, I'm willing to give it all. No knowledge hoarding here. So thank you guys very much. Like and sub down below and I will see you in the next one. Peace.